Hey everybody, it's Tyler Tapper. So happy to be with you guys here today for another knife build. My plans changed quite a bit from when I first started making this to how it ended up finishing. First I was going to just use the seed pod for the handle material, but um, as you'll see it didn't quite work out that way. It kept cracking and breaking and I ended up having to use some backer plates for it. These particular seed pods are more of the same ones that I got from Hawaii. These were different species and a little bit smaller, so I thought they would work better for this slimmer knife. I'm arranging them in basically the shape of the knife blank I have. My idea is I'm going to epoxy them together and then I can just use that for the handle. This is two-part epoxy from Max CLR. It's the stuff I always use. I get it off eBay. Um, you can see I'm just drizzling it in the holes of the seed pod there to kind of fill them up. Now right above that you can see there's also some cross sections. These are some spalted apple wood out of my backyard. Um, so I sectioned this branch. I didn't know I was going to use these in the same project at this point. I was just kind of trying to infuse them with the resin a little bit to get it nice and hard. So after the epoxy dried on those and I tried to take them out of the off the tape, they kept cracking, they weren't very strong. So I realized I needed some kind of backer plate for them. I wanted to use that apple wood because I thought the spalting looked really cool in it, um, but those weren't quite long enough. So I thought, well, I'll try and salvage the seed pods. I two-part epoxy them on top of there and then took them over to the belt sander where you can see I'm flattening them out. I'm going to end up use, doing two layers of those seed pods on there here after I... Um, get them cut down to the final thickness that I need. Here we're mixing up some more of the five minute epoxy to bond more of the pieces together. So one of the reasons I wanted this knife was because I don't have a nice tomato knife, so this is a serrated one. Off camera, I put some tomato seeds inside of the voids on the uh, on that seed pod there. Um, you can't end up really seeing them in the finished project very much, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to integrate that into there. And here I'm still trying to build up that thickness there, epoxying these on there. Um, I realized it just wasn't going to be quite thick enough for how I wanted it to feel in my hands, so I picked up a scrap piece of wood. This is leopard wood, I believe, and I'm cutting that down to sandwich on top of there again. So more of that two-part epoxy. I'm using that instead of wood glue because while there's some apple wood on there, there's also a lot of resin in it and there's also that seed pod with a lot of resin in it so I figured it'd be better to use something that would bond pretty much anything together than something more specialized like wood glue. So I let them cure in clamps and then I came back and I made a little boat out of this tin foil tape and that's so I could pour another layer of the clear resin over the top of it. This was just, it wasn't quite even on top and I wanted to build it up just enough so that I could smooth it out into a nice round shape. And you always want to hit it with the heat gun to get all the bubbles out. After I sanded down where I was going to be gluing these onto and cleaned it off with some acetone, um, I got these handle scales shaped pretty much how I wanted them finally before I even put them on the knife. It's not usually how I do it, but I'm um, trying something different this time. The five minute epoxy, it really doesn't take a whole lot longer to glue the scale on and then drill the pins through. Yeah, so that's how I end up doing it here. And there was two different size holes in this knife for some reason. So the two small ones on the outside and then the bigger one on the inside to switch out. After all those were drilled through, I went on to the other side. With that cured, I could come back into the drill press and go back in through the holes I drilled on the other side so I knew where the pins had to come through. For the pins, I had to get the two different sizes of brass rod for the holes, and I wanted to 
filled in since I was going to be using it in the kitchen. I didn't want a place for a bunch of food or grime to get stuck in there when I was cleaning it. So I wanted to fill the pins and I decided to use some of this. Uh, it's a pearl automotive powder. It's like a metal flaky thing. You can get them on eBay. They're really cheap little bag. You have it's two or three bucks. So I mix that in with a five minute epoxy, stick it into a syringe, and then I just squeeze it in through the tube so it gets all filled up. So after those were hardened up, I used more of that same two-part epoxy and got them hammered into the holes. Came through and cut the majority of these off with a little hacksaw and then came back in with a file just to get them finished and smooth. I feel like I have a little bit more control when I use a hand tool instead of a power sander or something like that to get it close to the final shape. So I'm using just some regular polyurethane on this one. I'm using a high gloss since it's going to get wet. I figured it might hold up a little bit better. Um, taking to dipping my stuff a lot now. You can just hang it up. A little nipple forms on the bottom so you just have to wipe that up when it's semi tacky so it'll still smooth out the coat but really easy finish I just had to dip it once I didn't even have to do any sanding or polishing on the end and it cuts through them great it's kind of nice to have a serrated knife for tomatoes that you don't have to worry about keeping super sharp and just works every time so I was really happy with how it came together, especially a lot of the spalting gave it a lot of cool character with that apple wood that had been sitting out for a while in the yard. And it was pretty fun to bring things from so far apart together into one thing that I'll use all the time. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. I'd love it if you'd comment. I'd love it if you'd leave a like. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down there so you don't miss any of the future videos coming out. And I'll get back to you guys soon. Thank you.